Today we're working on the Pledgeway uh, XL. It's a 2006 Ford E350 chassis. Um, for this project, we're going to be updating the headlights uh, from these composite style headlights to a um, 5x7 sealed beam version. Um, and that's going to allow us to use these kind of modern uh, LEDs that should uh, work significantly better than uh, the, the dull lights we have now. Um, so basically the goal is to, to remove all that and install it with the uh, components for the sealed beam lights. So um, these are the components here. I've pulled a lot of this from the junkyard, so we've got uh, the buckets, the trim ring, that other uh, little trim ring that holds the sealed beam headlights in. I've got all the screws and other components that we'll need in here, these little springs, uh, also pulled from the junkyard, uh, that provide tension on the lights. These are just the random screws other things you might need. Also pulled these pigtails off the junkyard because the uh, the plugs that are required for the sealed beams are, are different. Uh, I forgot the names. It's H4 or something like that. Um, but it turns out that you don't really need those because the new sealed beam lights come with this adapter um, that will, you know, adapt from the existing lights to the, the new uh, plug that's required. So um, that's all good there. And then we will also need these little white plastic clips that provide like a surface behind these buckets that uh, kind of allow it to slide and rotate as you're adjusting the headlights. So uh, those are the parts that we need. Uh, should just be some simple hand tools required to do this job. And uh, we'll go ahead and get it done. Oh, um, the other thing you'll need from the junkyard is a few of these. I think you only need four of them, but I pulled a few more because they were all rusted and seized. So um, I got a few extras just in case uh, the ones I got were seized. I, I sprayed these a couple weeks ago with some uh, liquid wrench. And then I just gave them another spray of liquid wrench today uh, just hopefully to loosen them up because they every single one of them was seized in the junkyard so uh, hopefully now that they've been sprayed they'll be loosened up and they'll work for us so I'm gonna start by pulling the grill off it's just a few of these bolts here to get that off all right so we've got the grill off and it's a little unclear how those composite lights come off right now so um, to get a better look at it I'm going to go ahead and take the side marker lamps off the amber piece there um, I'm going to have to do that anyway because I bought new ones uh, some blacked out ones um, so anyway hopefully to get those off and get a better look at it okay so to get these headlights off I believe they're held on by this clip and this clip and we'll give it a go Okay, so that one went pretty easily. It's kind of a push back and pull up type of deal. And now these should just slide out. And they're held on with these little clips. So uh, I'm gonna try to be a little delicate with these. They might be brittle and break on me. Okay. Okay, yeah, these were the clips I was worried about breaking. Some of the plastic here is a little bit brittle. So um, I was able to do it without breaking them. And there we go. Now it's off. Okay, so this grill piece has what looks like everything we need to put the sealed beam lights in. So um, we've got a couple of these clips. That's where those white plastic pieces go. Um, 
this rectangular hole is where the uh, the screw adjusters go and same with this one so there's two of them you need both uh, that spring mounts somewhere down here and so we will uh, try to get all those pieces on and see how it goes okay so these white clips are just little pieces um, that help those buckets adjust it provides like a a slippery surface so there's less friction for those um, headlight buckets when they need to be adjusted so um, these should just slip on right here I believe there's three of them for each side okay Okay, next we're gonna put in these pieces that um, allow you to adjust the sealed beam lights. Those go in those two rectangles. So as I said earlier, I soaked them in oil and um, I gave them a quick test just a little while ago off camera, make sure they're free and, and spin freely. And uh, I've got two good ones here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And these should just pop in place right here. And right here. Okay, so they're fitting a little bit loosely. This one is pretty good, but this one's a little loose, so I may try to find one that fits a little better here. Okay, so I've tried a few of these, and they're all fitting pretty loosely, but as I think about it a little more, once that bucket is in here and it's held by that spring. The spring's going to put tension on all this and hold it pretty tight. So I think this one being loose, these being a little loose, is going to be okay. Okay, so now we've got these on here. That spring attaches to the back side of the uh, light carrier there to the back here. And then it attaches here. And that keeps everything nice and tight. So kind of as I was alluding to earlier that it doesn't matter too much if those are loose because the spring holds it nice and steady. And then these screws will now allow you to adjust the aim of the headlights and that spring keeps it all nice and tight. Okay, so it turns out that I will need these pigtails that I cut off uh, the van in the junkyard. Um, these are a different style connector than the ones that came on the composite headlights. So uh, I've got to track these wires, verify which one is the high beam, low beam, and ground. Um, this diagram here for a 9007 style connector shows that the low beam should be on the right, black is the ground in the middle, and the high beam uh, should be on the left side. So I've kind of marked those that got blue on the right, black in the middle, green on the left side with this connector in the middle. This. So that's what we've got here. I'm going to take my multimeter and verify that's true. And then I'll have to confirm with this pigtail uh, which way that's supposed to go as well. And then, you know, splice those wires together in the right order. Alright, so I was able to confirm with the multimeter that that diagram was matching. So I've got my blue is the low beam, black is ground, and the green is the high beam. Uh, which matched what I had drawn here. So that's good. So now I've got to look at this one and confirm which one needs to be which by uh, seeing what they've got in the manual for the new lights. Okay, so after staring at these diagrams for a little while, this is what I got. I've got black to black, blue to red, green to green. And so that's what I've done here. Black to black, blue to red, green to green. And that should now give me the standard H4 adapter. All right, let's test it out and see how it works. Okay, so I've got these all wired up now. They appear to be working just fine. The blinking is just an effect from the camera. Uh, all LEDs blink on the camera, so, um, you know, to my vision, they're not blinking, it's just a camera effect. 
Um, these lights do have a couple extra features on them. One of these is for a daytime running light and the other is for a, a blinker function. Uh, I'm not going to be hooking those up. So um, we should be good to go just the way it is. So we've got the low beams going. And got the high beams on now. High beams off, high beams on. Seems to be working. All right, so now I've tested the lights. They're all working. I've uh, heat shrinked these connections. These, these connections have uh, a heat shrink and a glue. So once they're shrunk on there, it's now glued in place and should be pretty weatherproof. And I'm gonna fire, uh, follow that up with some wire loom to uh, protect it from these sharp edges here. Okay, we're just about ready to put the headlights on the buckets, uh, but before that, I lubed all the screw holes with uh, some anti-seize, and the same thing on these adjusters. Um, every one of these adjusters I pulled from the junkyard was frozen up, uh, rusted solid, so uh, that anti-seize will make sure that you can adjust it in the future. Okay, so the lights are now in and they're working. Uh, but I did encounter one small issue. I'm going to have to go to the hardware store or the uh, auto parts store to get. And that's this blinker bulb here is uh, clear because the original headlight or uh, blinker housing was an amber color. But now that I'm going to be installing these black uh, blinker housings, I'm going to need an amber bulb there to, uh, to kind of stay in a legal space. Okay, I skipped a few steps here, but uh, I went to the hardware store, got the amber bulb to fit in the new blacked out headlight housing, and I uh, just put the trim trim piece on the steel beam headlights, and uh, everything should be working now. All right, so we're moving on to the passenger side now. The procedure is the same. Uh, you want to check your voltages to ensure you've got the high beam and low beam and ground correct. Uh, on this side, I've got uh, the green and black to the green and black, the black to black, and then this red and black to the green and orange. And uh, that should all work out. I tested it and... Uh, that should work. Okay, so I was having a little trouble with low voltage on the low beam side. And um, after a bit of troubleshooting, I chased it down to this little module here. This is the uh, daytime running light module. It came uh, on the Canadian versions of these Econolines. And uh, since this RV was built in Canada, it's a Canadian version. Um, so this is a little daytime running light module it controls the daytime running lights anyway it was outputting um, a very low voltage so I think it was putting out about 8 volts to my uh, low beams and so uh, after a bit of research I figured you could just unplug it so you just unplug it tape this off to keep it clean and um, you know you'll have to manually turn on your low beams and high beams now but it all will work so uh, that's what I've done. And so the next step is uh, we're going to aim the lights. Um, I just kind of put them in there. Now that it's dark out, um, I'll use one of my other cars that I know has uh, good aim on the headlights. Kind of park them up front against the garage wall and then um, aim these so it matches the other car that uh, I know has has a uh, good aim on its lights. 
Okay, so I'm sitting in the cab of the van now, and I've got my other car parked right alongside it. The headlights are even with each other. You know, the, the front ends of the vehicles are aligned. And uh, that car's got uh, headlights that are well-aimed, so I'm just gonna match them up. May not be the best way to do it, but uh, it is a way to do it, and um, it'll at least get us pretty close. Okay, so I got out there, played with the screws a bit, and uh, adjusted the headlights so they're about the same as my other car. And uh, we'll go out for a test drive, see how it does. Okay, so I've got the headlights. They're decently aimed now. Uh, could probably still use a little fine tuning. And I stripped out one of the adjusters, so uh, maybe tomorrow or next weekend I'll have to go back and replace that adjuster that I stripped. But uh, anyway, pretty happy with the results so far.